Hello, today we're going to be going over the 2024 Striker. It's a 3313 model. We're going to be starting right up front here with our tongue jack. Uh, your one switch here is basically going to for your, be for your light here, so if you had to hook up at night, your other one's going to be able so you can extend and retract the coat, the front of the coach. Basically, this is how we're going to level front the back and also how we get her on and off the tow vehicle. I do like to recommend while you're still hooked to the tow vehicle, make sure you're level from side to side first. I like to use a carpenter's level right inside the doorway. They do have stick on levels you can buy that you can stick on the side and on the front of your coach. Uh, you may have to elevate one side or the other with blocks. Once you're good and level from side to side, then you would unhook from the tow vehicle and level front the back. Once you have done that, then you're going to lower your stabilizer jacks. They're lo located on the co each corner of the camper. The nice thing is, these guys are motorized. Push here to extend. One side down will come first. Once the other one senses pressure, the other side will start coming down. Oh, no, they're both coming down with me at the same time. Look at that. Kind of start to hear that sound in the motor change it's usually when you want to stop and give it a little extra bump if you need it to but that's usually about all you got to do with those guys next we got our two 30 pound tanks these guys have both been filled minus what was used to test the propane system with and then you got this guy back here this is going to be your regulator basically this guy here this this guy will tell you what tank you are using Whenever the one tank is empty, you would turn it off, and then you just flip to the other side. There is a little window right there. Right now, it would be kind of clear. When that tank is empty, it'll actually show like what looks like a little red flash card will kind of pop up, telling you that, that tank is empty. This is designed a couple different things, where one, if you have both tanks on, it will start drawing from the other tank once it has been emptied. Generally, most people will have it in this down position, in this position here, if both tanks are on, what it's basically doing is pulling from both tanks at the same time. So realistically, you don't want everyone to try to do that because they'll end up with both tanks being empty. And it usually always wants to run out on you at about three o'clock in the morning. Behind that, we're gonna have our battery, 24 series, Deep Saga Marine RV style. And they got this guy right over here. Come over here on this side, you'll be able to see it. Basically, it is your battery disconnect. It disconnects the camper from the battery, so nothing would drain the battery. Right now, it's in the on position, so you can kind of see the green on it. Whenever you turn it to the left, it will flip over to a red, saying that it's been disconnected. All right, as we come around to the side here, I'll have to try to speak up a little bit because we are just running off the generator right now. This guy here is a Swintec slide. One thing you do have to know with these guys, these are to never be lubricated. If it sounds like it's kind of giving you some trouble, look at this and make sure that there isn't any buildup of dirt or debris or anything like that inside there. If it is, what you want to do is basically use some simple soap and water to scrub those and then rinse them off. step away so you can hear me a little better with that button so it says a stop and prime on the one side so usually if it's been sitting for a while you may have to try to prime it so you just press and hold that prime button until you start hearing that you'll start hearing that pump kicking and then from there you'll go to hit the start to start it up there is also the option to do that from the inside as well and we'll show you that once we've stepped inside I'm gonna have my camera lady swing around here that way I can try to block most of that sound. Basically, this is where your fresh water tank fill is going to be. It's gravity fed, 
So basically you just stick the hose in and let it fill. Watch the monitor panel inside when it reads full to shut that water off. You don't want to try to overfill the tank because over time it can cause damage to that. Next you're going to have an outside spray port area. Basically it's this guy right here. You got these two notches. They basically go right in there. You press kind of firmly and then twist to lock it into place. And then from there you got your options with the outside sprayer. Next, you got your city water connection hook up here. Basically, you always want to make sure you use a pressure regulator. From there, your options of an inline water filter and then your blue or white water drinking hose. You hook up to this guy, be ready to use the water system right away on the cold side. You do have to wait for the water heater to fill up before you're able to get water from the hot side. And then, of course, you got to turn it on to heat that water up. But we'll talk a little more about that here shortly. Now down below, there's this caution sticker here. These guys are your black tank flushes, okay? This one here is gonna be for the front toilet area. And this one, this one on the right side is gonna be for the rear toilet black tank flush. With this guy, I always like recommending going out and getting yourself a black hose, black tank, black hose. It keeps it simple. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to use a pressure regulator on that as well. Just because on the back side of that is a plastic check valve. Too much pressure can cause damage to that check valve. When, you're, when you hook up your sewer hose, of course your slide room is usually going to be in. You have your sewer hose hooked up. You're going to pull your black handle down there and start draining the black tank. Then you're gonna hook up your hose and turn it on and start flushing. Most sewer hoses come with a clear elbow so you're able to see when all the nastiness is gone and it's coming out with clear water. From there, you're gonna shut the water off at the spigot first and go ahead and unhook the hose from there before you unhook it from the coach. Then from there, you would close off the black handle valve and you're done. This one's kind of hiding from you. I'm going to steal the camera from the camera lady. You got your gray tank valve right there. Try to zoom in a little so you can kind of see that. That guy there is basically going to be the bathroom sink and shower. All right, as we come around, next, these guys here are going to be your vents for the refrigerator because it's a gas electric option. There isn't really a whole lot you got to do in here. The only thing we usually recommend is you would check for mud dauber nests. They can get in there, build nests, kind of start uh, blocking things to properly breathe or properly operate and work. We'll talk a little bit better, more about the tires when we get a better visual on the other side with them. Next, you're going to have your cable and satellite hook up here. Uh, if you had a satellite dome and then your camp uh, campground cable, uh, you'll have to turn off your TV antenna booster, and I'll show you that when we step inside. Down here is where our other drain is. Got your gray handle for the gray tank. This one's usually going to be your kitchen sink. And then the this one here is going to be strictly the bathroom in the back, the sink and the toilet. I don't know why they plumb it that way. That's just the way they do it. This guy here is going to be your 30 amp power cord hookup, which is in the, in the compartment on the other side. Let's see here. There it is. Right underneath here is where you would drain your fresh water tank. So if you had that portable water with you, right now that handle is open because we did test it and then drained it. And then other white smaller tube is the overflow tube. Next is where you're gonna fill the gas tanks for the generator, or if you're gonna use the gas pump on the other side to fill up your uh, toys. That's where that guy's gonna get filled. This guy here is gonna be so you can lower your spare tire if you need to change the tire out. And then next, okay. we got the on the go ladder. Basically, it's a mount. It's got a telescope ladder that you can purchase and where it's got two hooks that hooks to it. 
and then it telescopes down and you can get up and inspect the roof. Basically, you always want to try to inspect the roof every 90 to 120 days. Just make sure no air bubbles haven't formed in your lap sealant or the roof sealant uh, or cracking that can over occur over time. Uh, when that happens, you just want to try to clean that up and put some new lap sealant over the top of that. And the next, as you see, you got your nice little party deck area here. Uh, this guy basically can also, these guys can come off by pulling these guys. So if you're trying to load your side by side or motorcycles, things like that, you can take these guys off. And then from there, you basically just unhook your cables and your ramp will come down. With the door here, basically though, this guy here will lock in. But you are able to also unlock it here. This guy usually can swing out, but then there's usually not a whole lot to work with. A lot of times this guy will try to swing inward on you. As you kind of see, there's not a whole lot of play. Basically though, whenever you set it down for travel, this guy will flip inward like so. And it's got a strap here that secures. Keep this from flying around. And it's also got this secondary strap also to help keep that in place. So it isn't trying to beat up on our nice little doors there so much. You got this uh, little net in here. I didn't have it up on the other side, but basically there's a little extra lip right there. That guy just kind of locks right onto it kind of creates so, so that way you don't have that giant open void there. And then of course, whenever you go to flip this side up, it flips, these guys here will twist and lock into place on the back side. It doesn't hurt to get yourself a lock. They usually don't come with a lock. Yeah, that one's just got the, around the clips. This one's here is gonna be for your rear stabilizer jacks. To extend and retract you got this one here and you had one on the other side up top these guys are actually vent for venting whenever you do have your toys in the back that way them gas fumes wouldn't accumulate inside there if you had some gas cans or anything like that exhaust fumes from running it before you shut you know things along that nature next you actually do have a key to light camper so you got one key that basically operates all the locks on the coach and then we got our gas tank here Basically for this, you're gonna push and turn this guy on and it'll say off. You gotta press and usually hold this guy. I believe it's, see how it flashes like that? And then we can turn it on and then start pumping fuel. Nice thing about this, as you just heard it start pumping again when I turned this in the off position. So what this will do is that once you're done pumping the fuel in and you gotta turn it off, it's got a reverse, uh, it's basically, it will put the pump in reverse and it sucks all the gasoline back into the tank so none of the gasoline is being left in the hose. It's actually a pretty nice little feature. Next, we got our back door here so you can be able to get into the back of the camper if you needed to. Makes me look like a flyer with our key here. I just had it too, don't it? That guy's a little fidgety. Might have to put a little lubricant inside that door lock there and make it work a little better. But you're able to access the back side. You got these steps here that basically fold out, just like so. Real nice and simple. We do have a fire extinguisher right here near the sentry door. This here is going to be so you can secure the door if you wanted to leave it open. Next we got our water heater. You got a nice good size water heater. I believe this one looks like it is the 10 gallon. So it gives you a little nice little more room uh, shower time basically. So this does have the gas electric option. For the electric option, it's going to be located on a switch down here at the bottom. For the gas, it's going to be located inside on a control panel, and we'll see that here in just a few. Whenever you go to empty this guy, you always want to make sure you pull this guy here to relieve the pressure. And then you're going to take this out down here. This is your anode rod. It's a 1 and 1 16th socket to remove this. 
but you're able to inspect it. It starts out the size of a dime and works itself down to the size of a coat hanger. Basically what this guy is doing is in attracting the impurities in the water to attack that rod and not the tank because it is a steel tank. You do always want to make sure that there is water in this tank before you turn this electric option on. If you do that with no water in it, it will burn up the element and then you have to buy a new element for it. We see it happen a lot, especially when people are easily dewinterizing their campers. All right, so next we're gonna have our tires here. Basically, you wanna make sure your tires are torqued to 100 foot-pounds. We got our, what I like to call our over-aggressive sticker here. It tells you you wanna check it at, at, what is this here? At 10 miles, 25 miles, and 50 miles. That's what I like to call the over-aggressive. <laughs> torque sticker uh, usually good usually recommendations is usually at a 50 100 200 miles I usually also like to recommend usually when you leave a cramp campground there's usually all kinds of turns and stuff like that but usually first place we're stopping is the gas station to refuel well we're able to knock out two birds with one stone while you're refueling the truck or even this guy you're able to go around and check the lug nuts while you're doing that you're knocking out two birds with one stone you also do want to try to make sure you keep these guys topped off to their max PSI level, especially since you're going to be carrying a heavy load. And these guys, they got it in the good year. They got them right, nice big letters right there. 80 PSI is where you want to keep those tire pressure at. Next, we got the back of the furnace, pretty much your intake and your exhaust. Do like to recommend you do not try to block this so it can properly breathe. But we do like to say get mud dauber screens over these because it helps keep uh, the wasps and the mud divers out of there from creating nests that can uh, create issues for the furnace to properly work. All right, next you do have an outside 110 outlet, it's GFCI protected. And you see, you'll see these stickers around the coach uh, on certain outlets and stuff like that. We're gonna talk a little more about that here in just a few minutes. Next, you're gonna have your outside kitchen area. You do got your TV. If this was not out, you're able to pull the TV out and it comes and it swivels. You got your own remote for that guy here as well. Sink here, you got your options of hot and cold water. This guy is a flexible hose, so you're able to kind of flex it if you need it to. This guy comes out whenever you're done doing the dishes. This guy does have to come out before you put it up. Basically, it's just like a quick connect quick to release. And as you see, you'll lose a little bit of that excess water that came out of there. Just kind of have a towel to wipe that up, which I've got one right here. And you're able to wipe that guy out. Boom, wow. Just like that. All right, so then you're gonna have the grill. For your grill, your hose is already pretty much hooked up on the back side. So all you would really have to do is you hook it up down here and then you can store it right underneath here. Basically is where it will sit whenever you gotta bring this in and out. Right now, this is actually in the off position. Have you come this way just a little bit for me? Certainly. You see this guy here is in that off position. So to turn it on, you're gonna turn this to let that propane flow come through our line. And then from there, it's basically turn and spark until it fires up. Usually it might take a couple times to get going to kind of get that propane flowing through. When you go to unhook this guy, basically you're gonna turn this in that off position and then push your sleeve back to release. Get your little cap on there so you don't get no debris in there. And then like I said, it just tucks right on there, right on the side there, just like that. Nice and simple. All right, while I'm down here, you're gonna have your low point drains. You got your red, for hot, blue for cold. Basically, you use these guys when you go to winterize. I also like to use these guys whenever you're done camping. Okay, what you do is you open those guys up, open up a faucet, usually probably in the furthest spot, which would probably be the back bathroom. But as you go home, that air is gonna blow through those lines and push any excess water out for you. So no water's left in there where it can become potentially stagnant or bad. You know, you'll start getting that rotten egg smell and stuff like that. When that happens, then you gotta add bleach to the fresh water tank and run it through your camper or lines to sanitize them. All right, then we're gonna have our outside fridge. Basically it's 110, as soon as you hook up the power, it's immediately gonna come on. It's already getting good and cold. We've had the generator running for roughly about an hour or so, kind of getting things going on it. 
Alright, so with this guy, when you're going to store it, this guy here is nice. Make sure it's cooled off first. And what you do is you just flip this guy basically right over. You're going to unhook, unhook. This guy will slide right in. Then you lock it there. You don't lock it on this side. It only locks on just the one side. And then from there, like I was saying, the TV will pull out. You can turn it either way. What side are we trying to watch the football game on? Or soccer or football? Let's see, we'll set that guy right there since we know that remote goes to him. These guys just twist and lock. You got your main lock right there to lock it in as well. I do got the outside speakers on. I do not have them on very loud, so I wasn't trying to talk over them. I already had to talk over a generator. <laughs> Smart. Uh, basically, your front steps are going to be the same as the back ones, just a flip flip when they're in. All right, we're going to come over here to this compartment door over here, pretty much a storage compartment. And here we got our 30 amp power cord, <laughs> we got our manual crank handles. In case something happens, we got, you know, our tire one and then one to bring a slide room in if we needed to. This light here, you can turn on and off by hand. It also comes with a USB hookup so you can charge your phone if you needed to. This here is an aftermarket tire link system that you can purchase that will go on the tires. And then basically you have a um, an app you go on to and it'll tell you the tire temperature, tire pressure, things along that nature. Next, we got the solar charger. Uh, basically, it monitors the battery. Once the battery gets below a certain level, it will start charging the batteries. Okay? And then once that charge is done, it'll cut it off. But this guy now comes with a solar disconnect. So whenever you are storing that camper, you don't want to make sure there's too much of a draw going on. You can actually just disconnect the solar panel from it. All right, so I just showed you that sticker a minute ago on that one outlet, and we'll see some more on the inside. That is actually so that if you guys decided to get an aftermarket where it gets an inverter put in, those outlets would be powered through that inverter. Okay, that's a nice little feature about that, but they're not on all the outlets in the coach. They're only on certain, not on just some of the outlets in the coach. All right, before we step inside, I'm going to kind of lean off here to the side so we can, it's a lot easier to show you this control panel from here. Basically, you got your, this guy here will tell you your tank statuses. You got your battery, your fresh tank, black one, black two, gray one, and gray two. Then you got your water pump. You're only using the water pump if you're using the fresh water tank. If you're hooked to city water, you do not need that guy. The gas option for the water heater. You got your inside cabin lights. Our auxiliary light, which is gonna probably be one of our back lights in the back. You got your front cap lights. You got our porch light right up front here. Our awning lights. And then your other auxiliary lights are usually gonna be the two white lights in the back at the party deck area. And then this one here is going to be for red ambiance lights underneath the coach. Which I usually get. lit up in the back i was wondering where it was at <laughs> and that's basically what that guy's going to be for all right i will now step on inside we've got that fire extinguisher right here at this near this entry door as well comes with two sets of keys all right we will start this direction here basically you got the main bathroom area so you're gonna have your toilet. So for when you go to use your toilet, you lightly press on the pedestal to add water, and then all the way is gonna flush. It is usually recommended that you do put some kind of cleaner in there before you go to use the toilet and at least a gallon of water. You can use the liquid, which is usually two ounces, will treat a 40 gallon tank, or you can use the pouches. If you use the pouches, I always recommend filling the bowl with some water and then making sure you put the pouch in there and see it dissolve before you flush it down into the tank. 
got our light switch here. Basically, this guy here is going to open our bathroom and then turn your fan on. Then we got our sink, we got a medicine cabinet here. We got storage down below as well. Not a whole lot, but there's some. And then we got our shower. The shower does have a this guy here on the thing uh, on the end where you turn it to reduce the flow of water so you can try to get the most out of your hot water. Alright, as we step into the bedroom, you're gonna have a nice little spacious closet area. Hopefully you got some long arms. <laughs> uh, 110 outlet, USB hookup. As you see, it does not have that sticker next to it. It does come with a docking station there. I do not have my phone on me, but basically you just set your phone on here and start charging. You got storage down below here as well. And then our bed here, you always gotta make sure this is flipped up whenever you're gonna bring the slide room in or out. Basically, I gotta flip over. You do have a fire emergency exit window. So if you couldn't make your way to the door, you do have a way to get out. Each side does have its own individual reader lights and USB hookups, so you can hook up to charge your phone. Storage up above as well. You do have another fan up here also, but this one you gotta climb up and grab, uh, you gotta be able to open that and close that on your own. That's a manual. Uh, you got your TV hookup for the bedroom right here as well. It tells you where you're trying to mount the TV bracket. Sometimes these guys are not 100% accurate, so I always do recommend making sure that you guys like a stud finder. Down here is going to be where you can operate that generator from the inside as well. Basically to stop and start, and does have an hour timer on it. Come around, you got your light switch there. Then when we step into the, the kind of the living room area, you got your recliners here. Recliners got USB hookups for charging phone also. Does have a light. Right here on the side is gonna be your handle to flip it up so you can recline. Let's see, I believe even the middle one is that style as well. So if there's three people here, you can all recline. Mistaken, I think this one also, yep. If there's just two of you, boom shakalaka. And another charging port as well. Same thing on the other side. And then we got our fridge. Like I said, it's a gas electric option. So basically with this guy, you got your on and off. And then your options of auto or gas. Whenever you go to flip it to the gas, you see auto light turns off. The only way you're not you're gonna know that it didn't fire on propane is that it'll try to fire on propane three times. After three times of trying to fire and it doesn't, then this check light would pop on, it will beep at you. But in auto, it's always looking for 110. So basically it's considered to be the primary source. Once you unplug, as long as the propane tanks are on, it will automatically switch over to propane for you. They do come with a couple clips down there. Basically it goes right on the door handle. So you are able to uh, vent the doors whenever you're storing the camper. So that way mildew or mold won't form inside. And then the instructions are there as well. All right, then we're going to step into the luxurious area here. We got all kinds of space. Very spacious. I'm going to do a cartwheel. Just joking. <laughs> I would pay to see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got your TV mounting hookup here on the back wall. Your hookups, as you see, this, this, this outlet here has got that sticker on it. So if you're using the inverter. You got your ambiance lights for the bed area. The other one is going to be the main ceiling. And then this is going to be so you can raise and lower the bed. Uh, with this, there will be an attached video on how this all operates. So please uh, watch the attached video to get a better understanding about our bed and uh, seating uh, lifts. And then this guy here is going to be so you can operate the back uh, air conditioner back here. Uh, basically, it's just going to be you got to turn it on. You got your fan. Always make sure you leave it in auto. If it's in high or low, it will, the fan will just run. And then you got your um, air conditioner. And then the furnace. 
and then off. Pretty easy. Pretty simple. And then down here at the bottom is going to be where our fuse panel box is located. So basically everything that runs off of 110 and you got to have sure power or your generator is going to be on the breakers. Everything that operates off your battery is going to be on the fuses. And it does not look like they were nice enough to label them for you. Well, that stinks. Gotta like those guys sometimes. All right, and then inside here is gonna be your bathroom. This one's very simple. You just got your toilet and your sink. You do got some storage below. Um, and once again, you may have to try to get a step yeah. stool because your vent fan is way up there and it oh, is yeah. also manual. All right. And then real quick, basically you got these nice little uh, doors here. These guys are a nice little feature. You can actually open the glass if you wanted to. This guy here is going to be so it locks during travel. Then if you uh, also go ahead and open this, you pull on this, and this releases the door so you can open it when you're going to bring your side-by-side -side or your toys in. And then we'll lock right back into place. All right. You got the storage up there. I don't remember, I believe I showed you that. There's that other vent I was telling you about for the back side. I believe. Which one was it? One of these is a fire exit window. I believe it was. One of them was. Oh, I'm thinking about the wrong model. Must be the wrong model. Okay. <laughs> Too many cameras just start blending together. All right. Next, we're going to have the radio here. Uh, we had the outside speaker on. That was speaker zone one. Speaker zone two is going to be our inside speakers. You can have them both on at the same time, or you can have just the outside or just the inside on. You do have a remote that you can also operate it with. Now this comes with the the boost, basically your power base. Right here is where you do some of those adjustments if you want to try to get a little more oomph out of your speakers. Uh, fair warning when you try to turn some stuff up, it does sound like stuff in a camper starts rattling, just to let you know. Uh, I experienced that on a different unit. All right, then we are going to turn that off so I'm not over talking if you just push that button it's gonna mute it it won't turn it off you actually got to press and hold that power button till it says standby and then it powers down then we got our other thermostat here uh, for the front air conditioner this is usually your main also so this is the one that would control both this AC in the front but also your furnace and then you just gotta lightly touch the tabs you don't have to jam the buttons all right next you got your bag here with uh, most of the manuals for the appliances inside the coach uh, if they're not in here most of them are on online manuals in, anymore you got your gfci outlet here so if you find some outlets it's got the gfci sticker that's tripped or not working make sure this guy has not been tripped uh, you got storage up above we got our tv up here uh remote for that so whenever you go to scan for channels to, uh, in case you're not near the St. Louis area, you're going to press the little three lines there to pull up the menu. And then you're going to go all the way to the very end where it says settings. Then you're going to go down to channel, hit OK, go to channel source. And then from there it says tuner. We picked up 44 channels last time. Basically you would hit this OK button again right on that and it'll prompt you like are you sure you want to scan channels or we'll start to channel search but we're not going to do that so we're just going to go over to done and then hit back and back again and then there we go all right you got your rack here for the uh convection microwave right now we just got the turntable in for the microwave part of it for the convection oven part you would put this on top pull this stuff out basically uh, I do always recommend that you read the instructions on these guys uh, I do like to say just set your timer 
or your clock, you guys go out, you guys come back, you see the time ain't set on it, and you find out if there's a power failure, and if it was from the campsite or from the electric company itself. Okay, power surges do occur and they happen. Uh, so it usually does not hurt to get a surge protector. Um, just always know, um, the more you spend on a surge protector, the better surge protector you're gonna be getting. Okay, so just be please be mindful and noteful of that. You do got more storage up above all there. Then we got our stove top area. Basically, you just turn this guy to that light, turn this here to spark till it lights, and then just set your temperature. Always make sure that you do have the uh, where's the uh, vent. You got your vent on when you're cooking. But of course, you do have to be hooked to sure power for the microwave to have power. So for the vent and the light on here to work, because you also got a light, uh, you got to have power for that. And also down below, you also now have an air fryer oven. Very mm -hmm. nice. Very nice, honestly. Basically with this, this is also 110 as well. Basically you would just turn it and then turn it to your set setting. And then basically you're just gonna wait till it basically gets the temperature. Uh, usually it takes about 15 or 20 minutes or so, or not even that long, honestly. You can already hear it going, it's already heating up. Uh, but then you got your basket and basically your drip tray to go underneath to try to catch your debris. And that guy was really pulling some power because that generator really bogged down hooking that guy up on there. All right, and then we got our sink area here. Right over here on the side is where our LP and carbon monoxide detector is going to be located. Uh, basically, it is recommended you test this guy every 9 to 14 days. And all you basically do is just push this button right here. And right will perform the test. It'll make that same beep again. And then it will make another style of beep as well. And then it goes back to green. We just performed that test. It was that nice, simple, and easy. You want to make sure if this guy goes off that we do take emergency precautions. Uh, it's either sensing carbon monoxide or it's sensing propane in the coach. Uh, basically, you're going to get, you know, first person out of the door is turning off the propane canisters. Anyone else that's in the coach is trying to get everybody out of the coach. And what you're trying to do is open some windows and open the door and let the camper vent. Uh, basically, you're not trying to turn on any fans. Anything that's going to create an electrical spark. Then you're going to get 50 feet away for about 15 minutes. After that time frame, one person's going to come back in. Usually, the first place I like to tell you to check is always going to try to be the stove here. These guys being on this outside edge like this, sometimes someone leans against them or it just brushes up against them. They can turn these knobs and turn them into that on position. Okay, it can happen. All right, so just be mindful of that. There are other things that does also cause it to go off, such as cleaning chemicals, hairspray, and animal gases. So just please be mindful of all the everything that's kind of going on in the coach. But it is important that you make sure that that guy is properly working at all times. Okay, these guys do have an expiration date, usually about seven to ten years. Nice thing is they start putting, I think, the expiration dates on the outside of these models of uh, carbon monoxide detectors or LP detectors. All right, from there, we have made our way back to the doorway. Hopefully this video was knowledgeable and informational for you. If you guys do have any questions, please feel free to call us and we do our best to answer those questions for you over the phone. Thank you and have a wonderful day.